In this episode, we are going to be going back to our single story extension and we've got Greg on site today. Me and him are going to be going through the tiling and we're going to be talking tools. It gets very serious, you know, DeWalt, Makita, who will win, you decide. But before we get into this exciting video, just a little reminder, something amazing is coming up. If you're looking to get into the trade, if you want to become an apprentice or if you just want a complete change of career, stay tuned and enjoy the show. People were asking us about tools. 480 mil blade on this, made by Ruby. It's my favorite trails to use, to be honest. Laser, enough said. Literally by far and away the best. Makita, Hilti, any of you come to me with what's better than this. Hi guys, it's Greg from GN Tiling Limited and you're watching Builder a &E. Today I'm at the single story extension build that John's been running and today I'm going to be talking to you about what we're going to be doing with this floor, through in this kitchen, through into the utility room and boot room and then through into the downstairs shower room. Probably going to be here for three to four days on this one, so I'm just going to quickly walk you through what we're going to be doing. Tomorrow we're going to talk about some of the tools that we use because we've been getting a lot of comments about people wanting to know what I use, why I use it. So yeah, if you follow me this way we'll talk about what we've been up to. What the lads have done for me is they've set me this batten up because we're waiting for the doors at the minute. So I've got a batten down here on the floor. This inside edge here is exactly where the doors are going to sit. So I know I can trust this. The lads have double checked this with the door company. John set this bang on for me so I can trust this. I'm just going to double check it with my lasers that were bang on square but no doubt it will be anyway. We've primed the floor. We generally use Primer G which is from Mapai, and I dilute that down to three to one. Floor got sanded on Monday. Give it a good sweep out on a hoover prior to my arrival. All the lads did which is great. Had a final hoover this morning. We've primed it with three to one. Let it dry and we're just starting to loose cut now. I uh, see one matting from Doral that I always use. These two are just loose at the minute but as you've seen in previous videos that we've done I like to loose cut quite a section first then we start fitting with our wet and mix again we'll go through that one more time just very quickly just to refresh the mind of what, what we do and the coverage that we try to achieve on the back of this stuff and obviously why we do it is for when the underfloor heating comes on and if you do get any cracking or any movement or fractures coming through your screed it hits the bottom of the matting and doesn't come through and penetrate into our tiles we always do this not a lot of lads kind of swear by it but I do try and bang the drum to my clients about it better to be safe than sorry I know it's an added cost but personally I think it's the way forward so anyway today we're going to get some of this down probably get three or four rows of it down to start with and then I'm going to leave Alex cracking on with this whilst I then set up the tiles so I'll go through through the tiling process and where we're going to set up, how we're doing it. Client's gone, for, I think, for a third bond with these tiles. They're a 500 by 500 square tile, but they want to go for a third just to break it. We've got these different angles going on in this space. This is at 90. The building naturally just slightly turns in here. Obviously, this existing wall here then steps back like that and then this wall here is turning in there and obviously then it all squares up as we get through into the boot room and into the downstairs shower room and then obviously adjoining in to where we're going to have the sliding doors and the double doors here going through to the existing house everything squares up at 90 so to try and combat that a little bit we're going to go for a third bond we're stopping in this doorway here if i'll just show you there's going to be some doors on here so we're going to be stopping inside about here somewhere about 22 to 30 mil inside this door frame and then through into here we've got pocket doors going on here which i know the lads have spoke about in previous videos we're going to put an expansion joint here because from that end there the big doors where i just started off our chat all the way through to here is longer than seven meters so we have to put an expansion joint in this is a massive thing that a lot, i know a lot of fitters aren't doing at the minute if you get past seven meters you must put expansion joints in now fortunately in this instance we've got this pocket door so at this point here I can put this expansion joint in. We measured it earlier, it's about eight and a half meters from tip to tip here. From this pocket door back to this door is just over two meters. So I've got a six meter run here. It's a natural place to put this expansion joint. Obviously we'll make sure it's bang underneath where the door is going to be running. We're going to put the expansion joint in and then we're actually going to turn the orientation of the tiling like that. So if you're looking at me straight on here, this is how it's going to be running through here. And then as I get into here, we're going to actually turn the floor. The tiling in here will then run at 90 degrees of what's happening in the boot room. Same pattern, same layout. So then we'll tile this, same as through. This is a boot room area. Come through to this doorway. We will then stop in the door threshold of this door. 
and then we'll go into the downstairs shower room. A little bit of prep work just still to finish off on the flooring in here. The lads are just on that today for me. And then we've got a set of different floor tile through here. It's a patinated tile, a bit smaller. And then we're tiling these walls here. You can see the lads have got the elements boards on for me. Fully waterproofed and tanked as ever. Absolutely mint. Got the water proof round. It's like an extra protection on the floor as well. It does go behind the shower tray as always, but we like to put it on top as well. So you see you got this. So that's all for waterproof and it's just that extra protection. We'll silicone, we'll tile, then we'll silicone again as well. So you've got those extra layers of protection. Water's never going through that, it's gonna be bulletproof. We'll prime this up just on the outside edge with a profile sitting. It's gonna sit approximately there. So the plaster work just overlaps a couple of inches on. So when I do my tiling, it's gonna look absolutely flush and pucker. There's gonna be no dodgy element here where the plaster comes on the element boards finishes. It's just gonna look pucker. So John's made sure that's really, really good. He's feathered all this out for me, so that's lovely. Now it's all tanked and ready to go, but first things first, we'll concentrate on the floor flue there, get some matting down, get some tiles down. And then uh, as we move through the process, I'll talk to you about all the different elements. So then, we cut all the matting that we said we were gonna do, just quickly loose cut it all. So we've got seven rows back here. We've got back to roughly where this expansion's gonna go here. We just got one more to do in the corner. We may just need to adjust these a little bit just because they're loose cut at the minute, but they're there, thereabouts. Alex is just starting to get it down. He's fully stuck this one. So the key to all this, again, we've done this before in a video, but always make sure your first one's bang on, then you can work off it. So this one just takes a little bit of time. He's just trialing out a bit on his second one here. It just makes life easier for when he puts this one in, that's all. So he's doing that. So again, when we do our mixes for this, a little bit wetter than we normally use for tiling, but it's just so we get really, really good coverage underneath the mat itself when we force it down. Now, again, people were asking us about tools. First bit of tool that we've used today. This is actually new-ish. I only had this for about a month now, six weeks. It's the new DeWalt paddle mixer. XR, 54 volt, obviously with the XR batteries. Fits a nine amp battery dead easy. To be honest, we run this pretty much all day. We'll get out of one fully charged battery. So when we're on sites, we're doing jobs like this. So we've got a lot of mixing. There's like 80 square meters here. So that's a lot of mixes. This will generally get us through the whole day with one. But to be honest, we always have three or four fully charged anyway. Slots in there. It's got four gears on it. Does go up to seven and a half thousand RPM. So it doesn't matter if you're tiling. If you're plastering, whatever you're doing, this has got all the revs you need for mixing. And to be honest, I can't fault it. It's cracking. I've wanted one for a while now, worth of every single penny. So yeah, we're loving that. Ooh. Apart from obviously the battery, why is it better? Because... Has it got a lock on it? It's got fine adjustment. So when you got it down, you know, like on yours, you've got to tweak it by hand. Oh, but, but that's good. That's just, on the, yeah. that's just on the little thread, is it? You got it. So oh, that's good. if you got, I don't know, that way, that you just slightly adjust it. Oh, that's good, isn't it? So I if like you just that. got that little, you know when like, you were doing that one with them um, up there, with that timber? Yes. You were doing the wall plate and you were just having to like, uh, 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 yeah, you literally just tweaky tweaky. Oh, that's good, I like that. Cool, isn't it? That runs for a week. I mean, personally, I'm not really one for uh, being biased on my tools, no. if I'm being but, honest. But. but if I had to say, I mean, Makita's probably what? 
out of a hundred, I'd say Makita are a strong six percent <laughs> in, in my arsenal. I would say to Walt, strong ninety-four. <laughs> I have Makita drills, let me down. Burnt out, DeWalt never burnt out. So to, for me, it's DeWalt all day, mate. I mean, not that I spend a lot of money with them, just saying. Yeah, and I'm just gonna prove a point in a moment to Jonathan um, about my uh, tool selection, yeah. For me with DeWalt, the difference being is I've tried, all, I've tried a lot of different grinders. You'll notice that I use a flex grinder, which is outside, my corded 110. The only reason why I use a flex grinder is because when I was getting taught by a couple of stonemasons years ago, they used to use flex grinders, so I'm just used to them. When I haven't got a guard on it, which I know a lot of people go crazy about, I don't have a guard on. But when I'm mitering and I'm undercutting, the guard gets in the way. That's why I don't do it. Um, and I'm just used to it. Um, you go into any, any place where there's stonemasons, I can pretty much guarantee nine times out of 10, they will not have a guard on their grinder. There's what you should do, and then there's real life, to actually how you have to use your tools. So that's why I do it, it's just how I feel comfortable. I've never nicked myself. When it comes to my DeWalt, it looks a bit beaten up, it should do, because I've had it since the first day they released it. Five, six years, I've had this bit of kit, something like that, somebody no doubt will put me right on that, say so it's four and a half, five years, but it's been a long time, I can't remember. I have done thousands of cuts for this thing. Never let me down. It's 54 volt. I've got nine amps and I've got six amp batteries. I think I've got three or four nines. I've got two sixes. This thing never gives up. Brushless. Honestly, I can't state how good this thing is. I've got the quick lock on there. It's just a lot faster from changing between blades, from polishing and stuff. If anything, that's probably a little bit wide. It does get in the way sometimes, but I sacrificed that for speed. This has never let me down. Not bad mouth in Makita or anything because they do do some really great stuff. But when I've had Makita ones, they have burnt out. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's the new flex volt with a 54 volt power. Maybe Makita have got something out that I don't know about now or I haven't tried. It used to always burn out. Didn't quite have the legs because we absolutely abuse this. I mean, you would think I don't look, at, look after it looking at the state of it. To be honest, I've just had it a few years and I absolutely hammer it and it gets used for all sorts when it comes to the tiling, anything I do with stone. I am having to grind down floors. This is my go-to bit of kit because it, it's easy. The weight on it's brilliant because it's all set at the front. So it's all above the blade when you've got a blade in there. So the weight's there, you can control it really well. I can actually use it just one-handed, no problem that way or upside down, not a bother. It's easy enough for me to chuck around. When I'm trying to be fast. Personally, I just think that's the best. The best battery powered grinder I've used personally. And for me, it's DeWalt. A little bit biased because I love me DeWalt. That little hoover is amazing. People laugh at this. Great bit of kit, 180 something pound, I think I paid for that. It's a hoover and it is also a blower. I'll run that off my six amp. Again, I'll get two or three days out of that. Brilliant when I'm on sites and we can't have 240 volt. Different here, it's domestic, but when we're actually on sites and it's all 110, you're lugging a massive hoover around a 110. I can just pull that out, no bother. Fully cordless, I know it has the 240 on there, but all works off the battery as well, so that's amazing. Laser, enough said. Literally by far and away the best. Someone out there, please come to me. Come to me, Makita, Hilti, any of you, come to me with what's better than this, because for me, I've tried them all, literally tried them all. My mates that are tilers that have got different lasers, builders, etc. Mix that we've just been through, again, a while. Got all the power you want. If you're a plasterer, you're a tiler, whatever you are, you've got to mix stuff up. It will go through anything. I've actually tried it with aggregate and water in because they said to me to try it and if I wasn't happy, they'd give my money back. I did it, burnt through, no problem at all. Didn't even have to rev it all the way up neither to 7,000 RPM. I think I went up to like 5,500, 5,000 RPM and it was just no bother at all. Ate through it, so amazing bit of kit. Obviously radio, staple of any decent tradesman. These can be powered off my phone as well. I can hook all these up to Bluetooth, but bomb proof, it's wicked, but everyone's got one of these. This is the crown jewel. This is the one in the GN tiling arsenal of DeWalt. This is my wet cutter. This can cut anything and everything. When it comes to tiles, this is my baby. There's a huge stand, so it's got a really nice working height. I can stand there, push it through lovely, even for myself, and I'm like 6'6", six, six, I'm quite tall, but for Alex, it's ideal as well. You know, he's like six foot. It's, it's just a nice working height. This is all off 110 volt, but for me, it's amazing because you set 
your tile onto the base here and you're actually pushing your material into the blade rather than pulling the blade into your material. Doesn't sound like a lot, but generally as you pull your blade into the material, some of the cutters are quite good. There's a ruby cutter out there, which we've trialed actually on my Instagram, which I found really good, but it's massive. It's a huge bit of kit. You need a big van to lug that around. It's a big old piece of unit that is. This is a lot more compact. You've got your water that comes through straight onto the blade. Always use ruby blades, to be honest, they're the best. About 70 quid a blade, but worth every penny. If it's six mil I've used on this, I've used 22 mil. Never lags. It's also got the plunge functions. I can obviously set my depths if I've got to go through two or three different times. Sometimes we have to do that on some tiles, 20 mil porcelains especially. I like to go through about five mil first and then I'll go through the rest and it'll just breeze through, not a problem. Some people get emotional about Makita. Uh, certain people that I know, I mean, there's this guy I know who... Uh... <coughs> oh, look at that. What's that there, mate? Makita, yo! Is that Makita, bro? I don't know, I just didn't know if you noticed a sea of yellow I've got in here. But, you know, you can't... Where did you get that on the jungle sale, yeah? No, to be honest with you, mate, I, I, uh, I just went down, saw the lovely people at the Walt, and uh, spent some of my hard-earned money on some uh, amazing kit. Again, this light's amazing. It's a light, Jonathan. This is a light, John Boy, that hasn't got a, it has got a battery, and I wonder if it's charged. Look at that. Mate, it works. Three brightnesses to it. Can work it off. It's all uh, Bluetooth connectability, so if it's all the way up there, hooking on its hook, and you think, oh no, I can't get it, I can't get it, on your phone, boom, turns it off. Imagine. Next morning, boom, turn it on on your phone. Did they? I will convert you to the dark side one day, Jonathan, or shall I say the right side? Right, that is going to be where the frame is going to sit. Exactly. Yes. I'll set those beads up there on the ceiling. What laser have you used though? The Walt laser. It was. Green one. Should be right then. <laughs> so. <laughs> That is where the frame is going to sit. So did you use a DeWalt laser to set that though? Yeah, I did. I used the DeWalt. DeWalt, yeah. Was it DeWalt? It was DeWalt. Why didn't you use Makita, mate? Because I haven't got one. Oh, that's a shame. Probably don't make one. They do make one. Do they? Yeah. How come you ain't got one then? You're your FMB regional no, winner. No need, because we've already got two, so there's no need for me to buy another one. But your, F, but your FM, hang on, hang on, hang on. But your FMB regional winner on of the year, jobs, 2021. Tools. On our jobs, tools aren't mine or yours, they're ours. Well, no, my tools are definitely mine. Yeah, well, not you, because you're different. You're, okay. You're GN Tyler. Limited. Oh, there you go, by the way. Oh, no, that's, <laughs> so, some, some, some ginger bloke did it for me. Is that why you've had it in orange as well? Just to no, no, it. no, it's only so it goes on here. But actually on my uh, Instagram, as you might see, GN underscore Tiling Limited. It, um, it is actually the one you might have designed for me. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, at uh, John Young Graphic Design. <laughs> dot com. <laughs> dot com. <laughs> dot co. UK. Right. Anyway. <laughs> so, so obviously we're going to want a silicon bead down here, aren't we? Yeah, but that's what bead I'm saying. Oil. So, what so set it off? that there is literally going to be the back of them. The back of the frame. Can they sit forward? No. It has this one out, yeah. yeah. Okay, sorry, I've got a little bit of movement on that. So if I go centre of that, then if I set my Dewalt laser up to give me my nice green beam all the way down the centre of the room, yeah, is that right with you? That's right. Yeah. You're not going to get too emotional. No, I'll be fine. Oh, okay. I'll, okay. I'll, I'll have Pete to come round and have a little chat with me about it. I'll be fine. So I'll set that up there yeah. on that beam that straight through. Yeah. I'm back buttering John. Yeah, so you literally like put it on like butter? Yeah, that's what we call it. Back buttering John. Do you remember that? Do you remember that? <laughs> Our first ever video. So what are you doing there, mate? You're like you're spreading it like butter. Yeah, that's what we call it. Back buttering John. I was trying to do it to like encourage you to say it. Because I've never done like... filming before and I was like, I don't know what to say. So he was just trying to encourage me now and again. And he literally looked to me and just went. <laughs> <laughs> There's different trails you can use. No right, no wrong. Because this floor is really, really good, because it's been flow screeded and sanded off, I know it's pretty good. And I use my 10 mil. That's the notch in between. That's the size of the tooth in there. So it's 10 mil this way, and it's 10 mil that way. Says it on the trail there. 480 mil blade on this. So it's actually two-handed trail made by Ruby. I love them. They're my favorite trails to use, to be honest. 
just gives you a lot more coverage and just get a lot more down with it, it's a lot faster. That's just traditional, it's just over half the size. It's the same tooth, it's 10 by 10, 10 mil by 10 mil. So everything he does next to me, it's exactly the same as what I'm doing anyway. They're both pretty good on the blade as well, they're both bang on 10, so I know we're gonna be exactly the same on the depth. And plus I've obviously taught Alex what to do and he knows what to do, I can trust him doing the trialing next to me, so that's fine. I've got the dolly out today, just because I haven't got Alex with me all the time because he's doing loads of mating. So it just makes life easier for me. I can put some tiles down on it and I can back butter straight on top. So then it's just ready to go. Pick one up, straight in, no messing about. Got my perfect level master clips. Using the clips just makes it a little bit easier for us just to be able to get them back together. Normal ones as usual, perfect level master. One mils, people keep asking us about what we're using. So a lot of lads will be using like Montelit stuff. Um, I do use quite a lot of Prem Tool stuff. So my blades, my grinder blades, they're all Prem Tool. I've got stuff from Montelit, I don't discriminate. Um, I use sort of A, what I can get my hands on, but B, just what I've kind of got comfortable with. There's a tile supplier near me in Leamington and they, they do a hell of a lot of stuff by tile, right? This whole saw snaps into your drill and away you go. And these ones, they go into a grinder. Love these. You can dry cut these and wet cut these as well. And obviously with the speed of your grind out, it blasts through your cuts amazingly. Again, that's Montelit. So that's just for our fine tuning. It takes the little burrs off tiles and edges off tiles. Well, that's made by Montelit. To be honest, yeah, this is the best one I've got one of these. It's one of the only Montelit blades I've got, but it is fantastic. Squares, rounding off bits you've seen us using before. The thing I've come into the box for though, is this little baby. So that goes into this. This is where my quick release comes in handy if we're doing lots of cutting. And I will show you what this is for. Now I've used these tiles before, so I know they can have a bit of a uh, tendency of factoring when you're cutting them. When we're doing cuts like this, the L's, U's, whatever, especially where we've got doors involved, obviously we've got to cut an L shape out. Now with quite a lot of tiles now, the weakness in it is right in the corners here. So just a little tip, if I just drill with this little piece here, you see how thin that bit is there. Okay, so that's a six mil, six mil hole bit. I'm just gonna puncture a hole straight through the center of there, and then I'll grind it as normal, and then I know it's got less chance of cracking because I've rounded it off. Rather than grinding all the way through it, and then I pass underneath the tile in both directions, I'm putting a weak point on the tile, whereas this way, keep as much strength from the tile as I possibly can. They are full budded porcelain, but like I say, I know they can sometimes fracture, so I'm just giving it the best chance it can have for that not happening, so I'll show you what we do with that now. Easy as that. So, I've gone right through the point there, it's just create a little curve there. So now when I grind down here, we've still got all the strength, because I haven't got to go past. So normally I would grind long here, and then I have to go past, and I grind long here, and I've got to go past, because of the rotation on the blade. It's just the way it happens, so it always goes further at the bottom of your toil. So if you do this, you don't get that. So again, I'll grind this for you, and you can see what I mean. See my cut there, but if you notice underneath, I haven't had to come past here as normal and come past there as normal. So that's where drilling the corner out is really good, so I'm not weakening that part of the tile and giving it every single chance. All right, let's see if it fits. So now in that corner, there's a lot more strength. So if the screed does want to move, which somewhere naturally it's going to do, it's going to be on a corner. The matting will help and prevent a little bit, but it's not a magic wand. If it's going to move, it's going to move, but the mat will hopefully, hopefully protect the tile. Something I just added that I can do to help the tiles along the way is by drilling out the corners where I can. So it's just an added little thing, but it takes seconds. See how quick it is. It's just worth doing, that's all. A 
I like to take my time on the first couple of rows getting it set up. So I've set the laser, I've double checked it off this tile here, just my measurement back just to make sure I'm good. So I'm 162 to the right, to this left hand side of the beam. So I know in the center then I'm 163, which is what I want for third bond on these. So basically I use the green line as my grout joint. And then I know if I put that there, that's right touching the outside edge of this tile. And then I put it there, that's bang touching the outside edge of my tile. So now I'm square, I'm straight, I'm true. I'm really good on that front edge. I'm really good to that wall, because I know the lads have dubbed this. I know I should be real good there, because if John's done it, Pete's done it, Potsy's done it, whoever's done it, I know it'll be bang on anyway, or within a mill or two, well within reason. I know I'm spot on, so that's absolutely bang on there. Bang on there, I can see it there anyway on this tile. And then I can just transfer that and just repeat the process. I'll make a mark on my tile to get the next one. It'll be 163 mil, and then I'll just step it back because I've only got the one laser. So ideally, I'd have another one set up on there. I'll repeat this, and you can see a little bit more of how I get to where I get to today, and then we'll just see where we go. What we're using is Benfa. I've only just started using Benfa. Really, really, really impressed with it, to be honest. It's an Italian company. It's basically, if you know anything about adhesive, it's just like the old Caracol adhesive, the biogel stuff. That stuff's changed a little bit. It's still really, really, really good stuff. But to be honest, I actually think this Benfa is just as good, if not better now. It's cheaper as well than the Caracol, so it's really, really reasonable price. I'm buying this stuff at the moment from the guys at Protile at all. If you call them up, ask for Tilly. Tilly all sorts me out, he's a really good guy. They've got a multitude of stuff there from Mapoi, Benfa. They sell all the Ruby, Montelit, Sigma, everything you can think of, to be honest, to do with tools for the tiling industry. Um, they've got it. From your suction cups, your large format stuff, your adhesive, your grouts, clips, They've got the lot. Spacers, trowels, grout and sponges, normal sponges, literally name it, they've got it. They've actually recommended this stuff to me. Comes 25 kg bags, low dust as well, which is great from a mix in large quantities. It doesn't go all over the place. Alleviates the use of mass and stuff. It just speeds us up a wee bit. Really, really, really strong bond strength, but it's really creamy when you knock it up. Just makes it easier for troweling, a little bit easier to use. It's easier to clean up as well, off the tiles. And the 25 kg bags, normal bag of 20 kg will get you about four square meters-ish. Maybe three, three and a half if you're going into the matting, just because of the pits in the mat. This stuff on the matting, we're getting about four and a half to five square meters on the five kg bag. But the price of it is actually more comparison to a 20 kg bag from most places. So you're getting more bang for your buck as well. You actually think you're paying more money, but you're actually not, because you're actually getting more adhesive, and it goes a little bit further. So really, really highly recommend this stuff. Like I said, I've only just started using it, haven't used it in every single application yet, but obviously this job is gonna get tested a bit. We're under the matting, we're on top of the matting. We'll do different formats of tiles in here, and we're also going onto the walls. So we'll see how it performs, and obviously you'll see if it's on more videos if they like it. So there you go. The original plan was a slightly different design on these walls. What it was gonna be was two of these tiles together and then another two flipped the other way. But unfortunately, because of the grout joint that we've got in this, it's right there going across. It doesn't lend itself because the tiles are actually this all the same size. On every single block, it was throwing us out two mil, which is obviously the thickness of our grout joint. So we had to slightly reassess. We've actually gone for a third bond on this. So the center, 
from here, from this point here to this point here is 66 mil. So straightforward enough to be honest, it's quite nice, we've wrapped it around, so our cuts then fall around and wrap onto this wall here, so it looks like it all flows around. I think it's worked really, really well. So we've had to compromise a little bit on that, but the client came in, okayed everything, and to be honest, I think it's worked out really nicely. So that's where we are with that. Walls are on, so now we're onto the floor. So we've got this patinated tile, and as usual, we're setting our tray up. What I like to try and do is have a full tile coming down this way and a full tile coming down this way, especially when we've got a pattern tile because um, otherwise you just lose the patination and you've always got this tray in the middle and it's like, what do you do with it? It's a bit of a white elephant in the room. So I always think the best way to do it is just try and express and show the pattern as best way you can. Leaves us always with some tricky cuts, which we've just done. We've gone full run this way, full run this way. It's given us a really nice cut here, giving us a full piece over here because obviously we've got skirting board picking up. Setting it up this way, especially with a tile that's uh, 330 by 330, you're quite often left with these little pieces here. So you've just seen me cut those on the grinder. But what I haven't shown you before is how I get that really nice edge. Had a few people asking, again, we're talking about tools. So I use these polishing pads. Very, very simple bits of kit. This one's a 60 grit, that one, 200 grit. I have got other ones, 400 grit, so on and so forth, but don't really need it for this. You can use these for a dry application and a wet application. In this instance, I use it for a dry application, but it is raining outside, so there's a little bit of rain on there, but you can go dry or you can go wet with it, it doesn't really matter. So you run your 60 over it first, and what it does, it kills the edge off. So what I mean by that is it takes all the little burrs, all the little chips that you've got around that edge that we just got on camera, you lose it all. Off the back of that, then I'll use the 200 grit, so that just basically smooths it. So when you run your finger over it, it does feel really, really silky smooth. That's why I do it. These particular ones, again, no surprise, are made by Ruby. I do love my Ruby. I know Montelet make these as well. I think Bright Ideas do them, and I'm sure other companies do as well, but these ones are Ruby ones. All they are is sponge, and they've just got the diamond pad on there. You can see the difference there in the patination. So that's the 60, that's the 200, and again, they get fine out, and there is a more coarse one as well, but these are kind of the go-to for me. I can do most things with these uh, for porcelain and ceramic. So we'll get this down, set time-lapse up, and uh, you'll see us fly this in. All the tiling is now complete, floor's done, round the shower, all the walls are nice and dry. So again, we're using Mapo as usual. The client specified moon white for the walls there, which is number 103. We can get the color match silicone, around the bottom of the tray and all the internal corners. After the grout's dried, it's all been buffed off. We're just getting these walls grouted up. Move down to the floor, we'll obviously give this a good sweep and a hoover first. Grout all through here, and then it will transfer that through to the boot room, through to the kitchen and the cupboard, which is in the limestone, I believe, which is 299, I think on the Mapo chart. So then that'll all be done as well. The expansion joint, color match, everything thinking and then yeah so I'm just gonna get this started off and now uh, we'll set a time lapse up and you can have a little look
So then guys, it's just done on this project. We've got the kitchen finished, the boot room and the bathrooms. So that's everything for us on this one. Stay tuned now because we've got some stuff that I've been doing sort of in the background of our own work. Uh, so stay plugged for that. We will be getting some footage out about those projects. Please jump on my Instagram if you can. It's GN underscore Tiling Limited and I'll see you next time. Thank you.